Hello everyone and welcome back to Agent of Gash, which is a channel dedicated to Age of Sigma. And in this video we're going to be returning to the Gloom Spike Git in the Age of Sigma Army Archive. And uh, this is going to be their second army video. And what we're going to be looking at in this is the command traits, the artifacts of power and the spell laws for all the Moon Clan units within the army. As I think it's only suiting to start with the Moon Clan as that makes up the majority of the Gloom Spike Gits. Right, so firstly, we're going to look at the command traits, and we're going to start with the Blessings of the Bad Moon, which is for the Loon boss only. So there's a few units that count as a Loon boss. You know, you've got one on uh, Mangla Squig, you've got one on A Squig, you've got one with a giant K Squig, you've got one, you know, on foot, and the one on foot sort of, you know, got the one with like the, the moon shaped helmet. So there's quite a few to choose from. Um, there is, uh, basically, this is the keyword you're looking for the Loon boss. And yes, the Loon King does have the Loon Boss keyword, but just remember, of course, he is a named character, so he can't take any of the command traits or artifacts of power. That shouldn't come as much as a surprise, but just in case you guys aren't aware, just so you know. Anyway, let's go into the command traits of the Blessing of the Bad Moon for your Loon Bosses. So what we got, the first one is Cunning Plans. At the start of the first battle round, you receive one additional command point. I like this, I like this a lot, especially compared with the um, Rise of the Bad Moon Bash Trait ability, which we looked in the uh, first army video. It's a way for you to get you know, a command point generated that way, on top of the one you'll get at the start of your turn. So by having an additional one, you can, what, clock three command points a turn if you really wanted to? So yeah, I do like that, that's a good start. Right, the next one is Fight Another Day. Each time this general attacks with its melee weapons, it can make a 2d6 move after all of its attacks have been resolved. If it does so, it must finish the move more than three inches away from the enemy. Units. So, this does mean it's quite good, you know, especially if it's quite a weak little hero, but he's a bit of a buffer. So, you don't really want him to get in the fight, but he buffs things, you know, he gives, he's got abilities that benefit everything else. And of course, we're going to go into all the abilities when we go into that part of the army videos. But, it might be pretty good. It's similar to, you know, the Skaven thing where they can retreat. However, you only move 2d6. You don't make a normal movement. You move 2d6. That means that you always get the chance to roll a double one. And if you roll a double one, obviously that means that automatically you're not going to get out of combat because it means you only move two inches and you would have had to be within three inches of the enemy to be in combat in the start. So it's a little bit, you know, obviously that's quite unlucky getting double one. Of course it is. You know, it's the worst result, but it's not guaranteed. Especially if he's a bit surrounded by the enemy, then he's going to need probably more than a four to get away. Um, because if he's within three inches of the enemy and he moves three, does that make him still technically within three inches of the enemy or just out? But anyway, so it's not guaranteed. So that's why I'm only a bit cautious about that. Right, the next one is Sneaky Stabber. So you can reroll wound rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by this uh, general. That's okay. I mean, the loom bosses, their melee weapons, bear in mind this isn't going to affect their mounts, just the loom boss themselves aren't too bad they're okay you know they're not like the typical sort of goblin attack you think oh that's gonna be shite they're actually all right there's some d3 damage however i don't think you know that's the best way to go personally um before going you know really deep into their rules and stuff i feel like they're mainly more of a support piece rather than a i'm gonna go and destroy everything unless it's on a like a mangler squig or something like that but of course this isn't going to affect the mangler squig's attacks Right, number four, we've got Tough and Levery. Add two to the General's Wounds characteristics. That's really nice, especially with how um, you know weak some of your goblins can be. I'm just going to flick through the battle time now, just to pick out an example here. Um, so we go for duh, 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 the, just the General Loom Boss, which is the new model for it, which is the one with the uh, on the box art. Anyway, it's got a you know yellow uh, metal moon helmet, and he's on the front of the battle time. So that guy. He only has five wounds and a five plus save. So giving him an extra two wounds makes a whole load of difference. Same with the loom boss with a giant case squig. He's got six wounds. Um, it just makes a really, really big difference, which means it could be the difference between obviously him dying and not dying, because I'm sure of you guys, not even just for the gloom spike gets, but just in general, you're sort of like small heroes. How many times has it been where like they've got five wounds and it's just that one extra wound the enemies did to them, the one extra damage that just killed them off, you know, they or if they just saved the extra save, they would have been on that, you know, um, last wound, so they'd still be able to do all their abilities and so on. 
So by giving them two extra wounds is good. I thought it would be just one extra wound, so two extra wounds is very nice indeed. All right, the next one, number five, is a dead shouty. So once per battle round, this general can use a command ability on their war scroll without a command point being spent. Right, so firstly, I would apologise. I was about to say that, oh, why would you go for this? Because the cunning plans, which I said at the start, which was the first one, um, gives you one extra command point, you know, in addition. However, I've misread it in my head. So... The first one says, at the start of the first battle round, you receive one additional command point. So I was looking at it as it was every turn. So I apologize about that. That was wrong. So with that in mind, it gives you one extra you know, command point to start the game. And then this one lets you, once per game, use a command ability on the General's War Scroll um, without a command point being spent. I still think Cunning Plans is better. I don't think Dead Shouty is... I don't know why you would go for that. I think cunning plans is definitely a lot better. Okay, so the next one is the clammy hand. So if this general is within 12 inches of a bad moon loon shrine at the start of your hero phase, you can use the bad moon loon shrine, moon clan lair, senior rule two times in the hero phase. Okay, so that is actually pretty interesting because it's getting you more extra models on the board. Of course, you have to wait for your units to die before you can bring them back and you only bring them back a half strength. I know, but it's just, I'm thinking late game, this could be really, really, really important. Of course, your general's going to have to survive until then, though. So it's a little bit hit and miss, if I'm honest. Personally, my favourite out of these six command traits, because that was the last one, is probably going to be either cunning plans just to get the extra command point, which is, you know, an extra command point is basically worth... 50 points so that makes quite a bit of a difference or tough and levery which is add two to the general's wound characteristic because that is really good even like on a magnus squid it just makes him that much harder to kill um i do like the clammy hand though which was the last one to for you to be able to set up the extra unit i just think you just have to make sure your general survives which is a little bit of trickiness because like i say their saves aren't particularly good Okay, so those are the command points for the Loom bosses. Now let's have a look at the Gifts of the Gloom Spite, which is for Moon Clan Wizards only. So the first one is Low Cunning. At the start of the first battle round, you receive one additional command point. So that's the same as the one we saw before. So yeah, I think that's good. It's only one, but, you know, it's good. It's reliable. And it's basically giving you an extra 50 points because that's what you pay for an extra command point if you want to do it. So number two, we've got Spiteful Git. So roll a dice each time a wound or mortal wound is allocated to this model. On a 4 plus of that unit that inflicted the wound or mortal wound suffers one mortal wound. On a 6 plus it suffers a D3 mortal wounds instead. Okay, so I'm just reading through that. So I think you still take um, the wound and mortal wound. You know, you're still taking it. You're not bouncing back at the enemy, so you're still taking it. But you got a chance to do that mortal wound to the enemy. And uh, or D3 more wins, which is you know, if you're expecting this guy to die, and you know, if he's a moon clan what wizard, he's probably gonna die because he's not that survivable. So it's a way for you to deal damage at least to the enemy when he takes and it's mortal wounds, which is good. And if the enemy chucks a shitload of attacks at him, then they're all just gonna bounce back. But I think there are better command traits out there. So let's have a look. Right, the next one is Great Shaman. So this general knows one extra spell from the law of the Moon Clans. Right, okay, so some of your wizards, it's not going to really make much of a difference, if I'm honest, because they can only cast one spell generally. There's, I think there's, you know, the Loon King can cast an extra spell, but he can't take an artifact. So I don't know if there are any other wizards. That the moon clan have they can cast two spells i might be completely wrong if i am let me know down below i'll know fully when i review each and every single war scroll right okay so moving on from that like i say it's all right but it gives you option doesn't it but i don't think it's the best one or in all honesty you know i think there are better ones i think i've already read better ones anyway already right so the next one is called the dodgy character so reroll successful hit rolls for attacks that attack this general Again, good if you want him to be more survivable. Um, but still, it's like, this guy's probably going to die. So do you really want to really put all your effort into him? 
So that, that's all I'm going to say about that. Right, the next one is Boss Shaman. So this general has I am the boss. Now stab him. A good command ability from the Loom Boss War Scroll. Okay, so this could be useful if you only taken the Loom Boss for his command ability being, of course, the I am the boss. Now stab him. A good because it essentially allows you to pick one of your units. It's got to be a Moon Clan unit, of course. That's wholly within, I think, wholly within 24 inches of the Loom Boss, I believe. Or the um, Grot Shaman, or whatever it's going to be in this case. And that unit, every time it makes an unmodified Wound Roller 6, it does a mortal wound from the enemy. I'm trying to remember from memory with that one. But I believe it's something along those lines. But anyway, so that could be quite useful if you don't want to take a Loom Boss. And you only want to take sort of like, you know, well, I say, basically just don't want to take a Loom Boss. You want to take you know, a, um, a Moon Clan uh, wizard as your general. And you don't really have space for that Loom Boss, but you don't want to lose that in Command Ability. This could be the perfect command trait for you if you really want it. Right, and then the next one is Loon Touch. So add two to the casting rolls for the general when they are affected by the light of the Bad Moon instead of one. That's really useful because if you can always position them to be in the light of the Bad Moon, of course, the best you can, because it can't be always guaranteed. This could be a really, really good ability because you're getting plus two to cast now. You're casting on what, like, Arcan, his Warshall cast on. So that is really, really good, especially for your little Grot Wizards, which you wouldn't really think they can do that. So that's really, really nice. Uh, my favourite command traits out of this is firstly going to be the Low Cullen and probably the Loon Touch as well, which was the last one to get the uh, plus two to cast instead of plus one if they're affected by the uh, Light of the Bad Moon instead of one. Okay. So that is the command traits for all your Moon Clan units. And now we're going to have a look at the artifacts. And we're going to see what we got. So, of course, there is ones for the Loom Bosses. And then there's ones for the Madcap Shaman only. Right, so firstly, we're going to look at your Loom Boss. So you've got Spiteful Prodder. So at the start of the shooting phase, pick one enemy unit within 8 inches of the bearer and is visible to them. And then a roll or one dice for each friendly grot unit wholly within 12 inches of the bearer. That has at least five models. For each five plus, that unit suffers a D3 mortal wounds. Okay, so let's look at the positives. You've got a big range to pick your enemy. You've got to see them, but big range, that's good, 18 inches. Um, and that is not an enemy unit that's wholly within 18 inches, that's just 18 inches. And you're going to do D3 mortal wounds for every five up you get. So not just one more, D3, so that's very nice. Now let's look at the negatives. So first it has to be Grotz, has to be at least five or more model units. So you're probably looking at your squigs are probably the best case scenario, you know, your squig riders. Um, or you could just have lots of smaller units of, you know, Moon Clan Grotz stabbers and shooters and stuff, but that's gonna be quite hard to pull off because you've only got within 12 inches of range here, which is quite hard. I mean, if it's on something like a Mangler Squid, you've got a bigger base, that's easier chance, but Basically, if you can pull this off well, you can do probably quite a bit of damage to the enemy. However, it's you have to plan quite a bit around it, and it's a bit... I don't want to call it situational, but you have to put quite a few things in place to get it. So I'm not a massive fan. I'm honest, it sounds cool, it sounds good, but in reality, I don't know how well it would work. Then, moving on to number two. So that is a Backstabber's Blade. So pick one of the bearers of melee weapons. If the unmodified hit roll for an attack and made with that weapon is a 6, the save roll for the attack automatically fails and do not roll the dice. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. So I'm just reading that again. So pick one of the bearer's melee weapons. If the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with that weapon is a 6, the save roll for that attack automatically fails. Do not roll the dice. Okay, so I believe you still have to roll to wound, but then the enemy just doesn't roll to save. So that's pretty cool. But, you know, depending on how much damage you're going to do. So, yeah, that's quite nice. Um, the next one is number three, which is a Loonstone Tasman. So roll a dice each time you allocate a mortal wound to the bear on a fire plus that mortal wound is negated. Now, on your little guys, you know, your little loon bosses, I don't really see this being that good. On a Loom Boss or Manga Squig, this can make him much more survivable. So, yeah, has got a tick in the box for me on that one. Right, okay, number four, we've got Pipes of Doom. So, subtract one from the Bravery Characteristics of enemy units while they are within 12 inches of the bearer. That's good if you're going to try and work out a Bravery Bomb for the army, but if you're not really going that way, I, I wouldn't take it. Um, the next one, number five, is Clammy Cow. Cole? I think something like that. Anyway. 
So subtract one from the hit rolls for attacks that target the bearer. Good standard one. Um, makes it more survivable, especially on a big thing like a mango squig. However, if you're taking the mango squig, I would do the one that saves us against um, mortal wounds. You know, honestly. Right, okay, and then number six is a leering a gitch shield. So if the unmodified save roll for an attack made with a melee weapon that targets the bearer is a six. The attacking unit suffers a one mortal wound after all of its attacks have been resolved. Okay, so if the enemy surrounds, I'm going to use the Mangler Squig every time as an example. The enemy surrounds your Loon Boss and Mangler Squig, chucks loads of bucket worth of attacks to them, and then you roll your saves, and you get pretty good with your save rolls. You could do a lot of damage to the enemy. Right, so out of all them, which ones are my favourite? So I like the Loon Stone Talisman for the 5 up mortal wound save. I like the Clammy Cow, or however that's pronounced, for the strat one from Hit Rolls, and I like the Leering um, Git Shield. Um, yeah, just reading through them, I'd probably say the Loonstone Talisman is my favourite, just have that 5 up save against Mortal Wounds, especially for your big guy on the Mangler Squig. So, looking at the next one, so this is going to be the Fortitude Fetishes, I think that's how it's pronounced, and this is for Madcap Shaman only. So, the first one we've got is Spike Shroom Familiar. So, subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made with enemy models while they are within three inches of the bearer. Okay, that's pretty good because they don't have to target the bearer, just have to be within three inches. Now, you don't really want to get these shamans into combat. Okay, and if they're within three inches of the enemy, they're in combat. However, if the enemy does a cheeky deep strike or a big flanking maneuver and catches you off guard, you can go to the enemy. Oh, okay, so you're going to attack me now. You know, let's say they've got the um, eels or something like that. You know, the um, what they call the Achillean guard or something like that for the um, uh, in the death deepkin. Um, what they like to do, they like to do big long flanking maneuvers and charge you and like fuck you up the arse. And then you can go, okay, you might as well hit now. But you didn't see that coming. And then they'll be very, very annoyed. So, yes, I do quite like that one. Right then, so moving on to number two is the Moonface Momet, I think that's pronounced. Um, at the start of the combat phase, pick one enemy unit within 12 inches of the bearer. So track one from the save rolls for attacks that target that unit until the end of the phase. Okay, that's huge. That's pretty big because you're essentially making everything have a minus from rent against that unit. Which is really, really big. Um... Yeah, I do like that, and the sign I don't think the enemy will see coming. You know, like, the one I just read before, the, um, what was it, the Spike Shroom Familiar, that makes the enemy minus one to hit. The enemy might go, oh, oh fuck, I didn't know that, but alright then, you know, I've, I've been minus one to hit before. But having a minus one save to you, which isn't done by Rend, is something that will catch them off guard, I think, anyway. Right, okay, and then number three, which is the last one for the, um, uh, Madcap Shamans, so you only have three to choose from, but uh, that one is Staff or Sneaky Steeding. So add one to the casting and biding rolls for the bearer for each enemy wizard within 12 inches of the bearer. In addition, add one to the casting and binding rolls for the bearer for each enemy hero with an artifact of power within 12 inches of the bearer. Okay, so firstly, you can't always guarantee there's going to be a guy with an artifact within 12 inches of you. Yeah, the enemy will have at least one, but. It's a bit situational. However, adding one to your um, casting and binding rolls for each enemy wizard is good. But my favourite one out of all this is probably going to be the Moonface uh, Momet. So that allows you to subtract one from the enemy savers. Of course, I don't think this is going to work against Ethereal units. I don't think it will. Uh, you know, your Nighthorn. But it's still good. Failing that, the Spike Shroom Familiar has got to be my second favourite. Okay, so that is all the artifacts of power that we have for the uh, Moon Clan units and then looking at their spell laws so we've got six spells here the first one is a vindicate a glare so a vindicate glare has a cast of five if successfully cast pick one enemy unit within 12 inches of the caster and as visible to them that unit suffers d3 mortal wounds okay so i look at this as a short range but better arcane bolt so yep says what does in 10 the next one is Itchy Nuisance. So Itchy Nuisance is a casting phase 6. It's successfully cast. Pick one enemy unit within 8 inches of the caster. And it's visible to them. And that unit fights at the end of the next combat phase. After the player has picked any other units to fight that combat phase. 
That's really good, and only cast on six. So that's my favourite so far, by sure, for all the reasons why being able to attack the enemy first before they can attack you, especially when they didn't see it coming, massive. Right, okay, the next one is the Great Green Spike. So the Great Green Spike has a cast on various seven. If successfully cast, pick or one friendly Gloom Spike gets units, hold within eight inches of the caster, and an enemy unit within 24 inches of the caster, and is visible to them. The enemy unit suffers one mortal wound, if the friendly unit has fewer than 10 models. Or D3 mortal wounds if the friendly unit has 10 to 20 models. Or D6 mortal wounds if it has more than 20 models. Okay, that's pretty nasty. Casts on a 7, but it's got a good range and you've got potential to do D6 mortal wounds, especially if you've got, you know, a big size unit, which you should do if you're taking the Moon Clan. Right, okay, so I like that. The next one, number four, is Hand of Gork. So Hand of Gork has cast on VA7. If successfully cast, pick one friendly Gloom Spike Gits unit, wholly within 24 inches of the caster, and is visible to them, and more than three inches away from enemy units. Remove that unit from the battlefield and set it up again anywhere on the battlefield, more than nine inches away from enemy units. It may not move in the subsequent movement phase. Okay, I like this one as well. So again, it's cast on seven. So it's the average on two dice, but it does seem quite high. But it allows you to teleport. And teleporting is such a huge thing in Age Sigma. I always go on about how movement is so important. And when it comes to teleporting, a lot of armies don't have the option. I know the Gloom Spikes can like pop something up with their you know, senior piece, but it's not the same as teleporting. A lot of armies don't have the option. So when you've got the option, it's definitely a good thing to take. It can be the difference between winning and losing games. Honestly, it's really good, especially if the enemy is unaware of it or they've forgotten about it. It can be really, really effective. Right, and number five is Squig Law. So Squig Law has a casting value of five. If successfully cast, pick up two D3 friendly Squig units, holding within eight inches of the caster and is visible to them. Those units can run and still charge later in the same turn. Yep, that's really good. I'd almost say vital for the Squigs because you don't want them to get shot to death outside of combat. You know, you want them to really get stuck in with their big teeth, of course. And then number seven is Call cool the Moon. So Call cool the Moon has a casting value of 8. If successfully cast, pick one enemy unit visible to the caster. And that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. If that unit is wholly affected by the light of the bad moon, you can roll the D3 that determines the number of mortal wounds. Um, okay, I thought that was going to be a lot better than. Um, yeah, I thought that's going to be a lot better at the start because like, go with the bad moon and it casts away of eight and all this and the other. But you pick one enemy unit and it suffers D3 mortal wounds, but you can re-roll the D3 if it's within the light of the bad moon ability. That's a letdown for me. Oh, no, it's not bad. You know, it's not bad, whatever, but it feels like a letdown to me. Um, yeah, especially for being the highest casting spell we've got here. But there are some good spells, so taking that one aside... I really, really like the um, Great Green Spike for you to be able to do potentially D6 more wins to the enemy. I like um, the Itchy Nuisance. I think that is very good. I like the Hand of Gork, which allows you to pick up your Gloom Spikes. You just move them, and I like the Squiggler. Basically, I like pretty much all of them. And none of them are bad, but I just, you know, some are better than others. And I think probably the best one out of all of them it's got to be the Hand of Gork, where they can literally just, you know, a massive green hand just scoops up a goblin unit and puts it somewhere else. And also when I say goblin unit, it can be a Gloom Spike Gits unit. So anything really that has a Gloom Spike Gits keyword. So I imagine what, trolls, everything. So yeah, super useful, super good, and definitely the best um, spell there. And, and guys, with that, it's going to be the last part of their um, allegiance abilities looking at the moon clan so the reason why instead of looking at all the leech abilities in this video is purely because it's taken me what 24 minutes to just look at the moon clan ones so it means that the video is not too long it means i can basically talk more in detail about each part and um, means i can cover each um you know faction if you like within the green spikes you know with the spiders and the trolls equally i think so yes i do think so so hopefully that's worked out and you guys uh, like it and yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please uh, like subscribe and comment down below massively help support the channel it's absolutely free for you guys to do so i really do appreciate that if you'd like to support the channel a step further what i have done now is set up a patreon account so essentially i've done that so i don't have to put adverts in the video as that's just really annoying isn't it when you're watching a video and adverts just pop up every two seconds and the patreon really helps support 
towards me uh little things i just get a new battle tone so especially for armies i don't do uh, like the gloom spike gets it's you know it's a 25 pound battle tone so it really helps with things like that so i can review these armies for you guys um it really helps towards getting a better microphone really helps towards uh, getting a camera for the channel all these things i'd love to do and mainly really helps me be able to justify the time i spend making these videos for you guys on youtube uh because i don't get paid by youtube or anything like that so it really really helps towards that and uh yeah so and as long as i can do that means i don't have to do efforts which like i say i don't think any of us really want to see and on that note i'd like to thank my patrons that are the vampire level so these are people who are tier two and these are people who donate uh, at least five dollars a month and this is going to be to max simon martin and carl so again guys thank you very much for your donation it really does help as you can see for all the things i've already been listing in many of the videos and uh, like i say we're gonna start seeing investment soon so that'll be absolutely great and i thank you guys very much for your continued support so guys if you play the gloom spike gits and you know lots about them or you just have an interest in them please comment down below massively helps if you agree with things that i've said in this video please let me know down below and that is the same if you disagree as well let me know down below It'd be really interesting to hear your thoughts and also with the patreon if you can't donate that's absolutely fine guys i just really appreciate you coming here and checking out this video today and i thank you very much for watching it so again guys remember until next time nagash is all and all is one in the gash.